I'd, I'd like to discuss uh, work that we've been doing recently to think about river deltas and uh, what the future of these systems might be um, resulting from climate change, of course, but also other human pressures that have been have been discussed uh, uh, by Ignasi, for example, before. Um, and just the, 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 uh, the pictures that you see here are, are kind of represent the wide variety of river deltas uh, that there are uh, globally, of course, including the Ebro, but many other uh, river deltas exist that all have wide varieties of, of shapes and sizes. Um, and uh, we know this in part because of a study we recently uh, completed where we looked at 10,000 different river deltas that dot the Earth's, Earth's coastline, uh, many of which uh, as you can see are in Europe, but of course are many others uh, globally as well. And, and we compiled data and we, we applied models to look at how these deltas would change uh, into the future. And if we just zoom into one particular delta, this is the, the mouth of the Ganges River. So this is the, the, the Ganges River Delta in Bangladesh. We can see that these systems are extremely dynamic uh, just because of their own um, the uh, natural systems of waves and tides and rivers that uh, constantly shape um, uh, their boundaries. So you can see islands being formed, uh, rivers moving away and river banks being eroded um, on scales of tens of kilometers uh, over just a few decades. Um, and this is a, a picture of the Ebro Delta on the same scale. So you can see how, how big some of these uh, systems are across the world. Um, and and uh, most of the dynamics you see here are, are natural, but of course, uh, humans have very um, big impacts on these, uh, on these systems. Uh, some of the biggest threats I think uh, that, that humans uh, have uh, for these systems uh, include subsidence and sea level rise. And you can see the red arrow subsidence, um, which lowers the, the delta plane over time. Uh, and sea level rise acts in the opposite direction, increases um, uh, sea, uh, sea levels. Uh, and that very quickly can diminish the natural capital that deltas have, uh, which is their, their elevation above sea level. Um, and so the combination of subsidence and sea level uh, can increase coastal flooding, can increase coastal erosion, and can also greatly decrease the quality of, of, of groundwater within river deltas. So it can increase the, the salt water intrusion and the salinization of the groundwater that people use uh, that, uh, on river deltas themselves. Uh, furthermore, a lot of the deltas globally um, are, are uh, dammed. So there's dams being built upstream that have reduced water and sediment supply to these deltas and that also reduces their ability to, to keep pace with sea level rise um, and makes them much less resilient uh, to cope with with things like sea level rise uh, and thirdly what what um, a lot of deltas are faced with uh, is is big land use changes on the delta plane itself um, so people of course have built cities and, and, and agriculture and that, what that tends to do for a lot of deltas is fix them in place. And so rather than what you see the, the Ganges being able to move around, what we've done by building dikes and cities on deltas is not allowing for any of these natural dynamics anymore. And that also in, greatly decreases their resilience against uh, things like climate change. Um, so what, uh, what we've done uh, here at Utrecht over the past couple of years is to make a very simple model where we can see what deltas uh, might do into the future uh, given these uh, threats. Uh, so you see here a picture of the Po Delta uh, where that, that, that nicely illustrates that model where we have sediment flowing down the river uh, that can build up this delta over time. But then we have subsidence and sea level rise, which again can, can reduce the amount of land that this river delta has. Um, so we can look at this delta, for example, from the side um, where we have water and sediments coming in uh, that has built this delta over time. And if there's enough of that sediment supplied by rivers, um, it can offset sea level rise and still and maintain delta growth over time. Um, however, if you decrease a sediment supply, for example, by, by building dams, uh, you can decrease your, your delta growth rate, your delta land gain rate. Um, or even cause delta retreat. So you lose land over time because you don't have enough sediment compared to the amount of sea level rise. Um, and over very long time scales, you can make a movie to see how sea level is going up and down and changes 
the, the dynamics or the amount of land that this particular river delta has. Um, but this is, of course, much longer time scales than, than any uh, human effects or, 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 or uh, climate change into the next decades. Um, but if you look at what river deltas uh, have done over the past decades, we also see some of these uh, dynamics. So this is uh, this video that is playing in the top right. You can see the Nile, uh, where you can see great coastal erosion in response to the construction of the Aswan Dam in the 60s. So sediment supply has, st has stopped and you see that the Delta is currently uh, losing land. Uh, on, the, on the lower left, you see the Mississippi River Delta mouth uh, where the same thing is happening. So dams have been built, um, but here you also have subsidence and sea level rise and together they cause a, a, uh, an, an enormous um, land loss here in the Delta, e equivalent to about a football field every hour that is being lost to the sea uh, over the past 30 or 40 years. So this is a, a gigantic rate of, of wetland loss uh, that, that um, is occurring in the Mississippi River Delta. Um, and we can see this for all of these 10,000 systems I, I, I showed you before, um, where we have satellite information that can tell us where land is being lost and where land is being gained for these different systems. So you can see all of the erosion of the Mississippi. Um, I showed you just now in that video, but you also see, for example, this is the Yangtze River mouth where we can still see big land gains taking place over the past few decades. So the, the Yangtze is still gaining land over time. Um, and we can use this information to see what, what all deltas together uh, have done. Uh, and what we can, what we, uh, can do with that is, is Kind of look at all of these different factors I talked about before, so dams and subsidence and sea level rise, and look at how big their effect was uh, uh, for river deltas globally. And what we find that if we didn't have any of these human impacts or climate change, we'd have deltas growing about 300 square kilometers per year. Um, however, because of dams um, and subsidence and sea level rise and a big positive effect from deforestation that has increased sediments to deltas, um, but because of these effects, we've only seen about 50 square kilometers per year of delta gain globally. Um, but so, as you can see, this is in the past, so this is in the past 30 years. Um, we can now look into the future, the next 100 years, and, and look at what different RCP scenarios, so what different uh, CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere, uh, basically, are going to do to, to deltas. So these different RCP scenarios of, of 2.6 have a a relatively minor sea level rise um, up to about 50 centimeters by the end of the century. And, and RCP 8.5 is a worst case scenario with, with up to a meter of sea level rise by the end of the century. And, we, and we, if we plug in these values, we see that under all of these scenarios, under RCP 2.5, 4.5 and 8.5, deltas are gonna quickly lose land into the future. And furthermore, sea level rise in these calculations is gonna be the dominant factor uh, causing uh, delta land loss. Um, so much bigger than what dams and, or subsidence do to deltas globally currently. Um, of course, this was a global picture. Uh, if you look at individual deltas, it's gonna be widely different. Um, if we can see uh, in these plots here where green is deltas that are gaining land and red are deltas that are losing land. And we see that the, the current picture is mixed mm -hmm. here from big land loss in the Mississippi, the land gain in the Amazon. But if we go to, for example, RCP 8.5, so worst case scenario, then most deltas are gonna lose land, are gonna lose land at a dramatic pace. Um, thank you.